solid ground, burn through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are still, when striving cease, my confidence, my all in all, here in the love of Christ, I stand. Good morning, friends. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Oh, come on. This is the first time we've been together. You can do better than that. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. What a beautiful day. It's a glorious, glorious day. Can't tell you uh, how good it is on my eyes to see you all and how wonderful it is to be uh, in each other's presence and to offer our praise to God on this resurrection day. It is just uh, a wonderful, wonderful thing. So thanks for being here. We were out here at 7 o'clock this morning for the sunrise, and just as we started, the sun peeked up over the horizon through those trees. It was gorgeous. And um, I wanted to share a few announcements for us, just some practical details so that we uh, understand kind of what's been going on. We had Palm Sunday and Monday Thursday and then a Good Friday prayer walk this past week, and we're culminating in this celebration. Uh, of Christ overcoming the grave. And um, this is really the day of days for us who believe in Jesus and who uh, follow him. So we're celebrating that. Some other things that are going on, there's a lot going on really. Sunday school has continued for all ages. There are Wednesday night Bible studies and small groups that are happening. Women's Bible study on Monday. If you're not in a Bible study and would like to, please just uh, reach out to the church. We'd like to help you engage with the Word of God that way. Also, the youth group has continued to meet and uh, is, is going very well. And as you may know, each summer uh, we take a mission trip, the youth does. This year they're going to Kentucky in the middle of July with uh, group mission trips. And um, in order to pay, help pay for their trip, which is about $475 a kid to go for a week and do that mission work, 
They do a few fundraisers each year, and there is one coming up in these next few weeks. It's a flower sale. So if you know a junior or senior high uh, who is trying to raise some money for their mission trip or retreats, uh, please be supportive. If nobody calls you and still want to support, you can just write a check to the, the mission trip and send it to the church, and we'll put it in the general uh, account so that they can be helped that way. Um, also wanted to let you know that next Sunday we will have this same setup. I can't imagine that God will give us another day like this, but we're going to have 8.30 inside and then 11.10 outside. And we're going to try to continue to do that as long as the weather allows us to do it. Certainly as the summer uh, comes upon us, we feel like that will be helpful. So I wanted to just show you uh, one of the ministries of, uh, of outreach here. If you turn around and look at the top floor of the preschool and see what it says up there. God loves you. That's why we're here. Because of God's love for us in Jesus. God loves you and loves us. And that is good. I realize on this Easter day, I don't know how many of you think about these things, but if you are one who has experienced a death this year, um, this resurrection day has a special meaning. And I see some widows and widowers who this is their first Easter alone or without their husband or wife. And some of you may have lost a parent or a friend in this year. Uh, please remember just how important uh, what we take for granted on Easter is that death is not the final word uh, and that there is a promise of life that is eternal in Jesus Christ. And along those lines, let me also let you know you probably haven't heard this yet, but very suddenly and unexpectedly, our sister in Christ, Jerry Mackey, died this week, just out of the blue, completely out of the blue. She was here in worship two weeks ago, and um, the, her daughter uh, called me, and she said I hadn't been able to reach my mom. I went over, and she was on the kitchen floor. And they don't know why or what happened, but please uh, keep the Mackey family in your prayers uh, if you could in these uh, times as well. We don't have any plans or um, arrangements for them yet, but please remember the Mackeys. And again, I just looking out, see others who have had such losses in these uh, last months or years as well, and that's important for us. I want to thank the musicians that are here. Some of these folks are members of the church. Others are uh, joining us, and we're so grateful that you are here to help us worship God this morning. Thank you for offering your gifts uh, in that way. And I just can't wait to hear you all sing in just a minute. If I've missed anything, it's being able to sing together uh, as a congregation. So let me ask if you would stand and let's use the words in your bulletin for the call to worship. If you don't have a bulletin, you can wave your hand. The ushers might be able to come get you one. But let's, um, let's call ourselves to the worship of God. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. God has claimed us as his own. He has brought us out of darkness. He has made us light of the world. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Friends, let's lift our voices to the praise of God. Let's sing it out.
pray together. God of grace and God of glory, thank you for this beautiful morning. Not only for the sun that shines and the beauty of this body of Christ that we come together in the name of Jesus, uh, but for the message and the good news and the hope that we have in the resurrection of your Son, our Savior. We are grateful for the gift that you have given to us and the hope that we have that we are overcomers in him who loved us and gave his life for us. As we offer our voices in praise, as we lift our music for your glory, as we uh, tend our hearts to you in prayer, we ask that you would come and be near to us. Help us to know the real hope that we have in Jesus this morning on this resurrection day, for he is alive. We pray in his name. Amen. You may be seated. Scripture says we were buried with Christ by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of God the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. So accepting Christ's power over our lives, let us confess our sin together using the unison prayer. Please join with me. If at times we deny you, God forgive. When the risks of discipleship are high and we are nowhere to be found, God forgive. When we wash our hands of responsibility, when we cast our lot with powerful oppressors and seek to buy freedom with silver, when fear keeps us from witnessing to your truth or prejudice keeps us from believing it, God forgive. In the bright light of Easter morning, O oh God, our sin is exposed and your grace is revealed. Tender God, raise us in your love so that with joy we may witness to your awesome deeds. In the name of Jesus, the risen one. Amen. You are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit. Since the spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and raised to new life. Hallelujah! He is risen. I invite you now to stand with me as we say together what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let's now uh, take a few minutes to pray, thanking God for what it is he has done for us through Jesus and asking for his continued presence in the days ahead. Please pray with me. God of life, with your church all around the world, we sing Alleluia and proclaim the good news that Christ is risen. We thank you that through the death and resurrection of Jesus, our sins have been paid for, 
and we have been made holy and given a right relationship with you. We praise you that Christ has conquered death and claimed victory over sin. We thank you that we can live with genuine joy that comes not from our circumstances, but from knowing the sure hope of new life through our Savior, Jesus the Christ. God, we know that even in the midst of this good news, there are still those who live in darkness and despair. We pray that you would break into their lives and show them the only place that hope can be found. We also humbly ask that you use us to witness to Jesus' sacrifice on the cross and to the empty tomb. Lord, we ask that you help us in our moments of hurt and grief. Help us not to grieve as the world does, but instead as those who have hope, knowing that you are the giver of life. We ask for the peace of Christ amid heavy hearts and conflict, and for your spirit to lead us through times of trouble and hardship. Help us to rest in the knowledge that you are victorious and have promised to return and make all things new. You are our Lord, and we love you, and we trust you. Lord, as your people renewed and made alive by the power of your spirit, help us to boldly proclaim that Christ is risen. We are thankful for the grace you have shown us through the death and resurrection of Jesus and give you all praise and glory. We are grateful that you hear our prayers as we say together the words that Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Please stand and let us sing together once again.
Thanks, you may be seated. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew. It's Matthew's account of the resurrection. It's a very familiar text, I'm sure, for all of us who are here. And sometimes familiarity breeds contempt. But I hope that as you listen to the Word of God this morning, that it would be fresh and be real and almost surprising for you. Before we uh, read from God's Word, let me pray for us. Thank you, God, for the gift of Scripture, your holy word. You have inspired truth through these authors, and you have revealed yourself to us through the Bible and ultimately through the living word, Jesus Christ. We pray that you would open our minds and our hearts and speak freshly to our understanding and to our way of life that we might live as Easter people, people of hope, people who know that Christ is alive and has been raised. So attend to us, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. So as I mentioned earlier, we have walked through Holy Week and we have followed the steps of Jesus from entering Jerusalem where he was to be king and the, crowds of, the cries of Hosanna, and the crowds uh, cried that out. Save us, save us, they said. And it was not very many days after that that those same people began to turn on Jesus because he wasn't the type of Messiah or deliverer that they had expected or intended. They were ready for somebody like King David, somebody to hold a, an office somebody to bring in an earthly kingdom and reign. But God had sent his son to bring a different type of kingdom, a kingdom not of this world, a kingdom that is everlasting and eternal. And so in that realization, people fell away. But remember that he gathered with his friends, his disciples in the upper room for his last supper. They didn't realize it at the time, but he knew. And he instituted what we call communion or the Lord's Supper on that night with his beloved. He shared the bread, he shared the cup, and they still didn't understand. He even said, as we talked about on Thursday, that he knew somebody was betraying him that night and that others would deny him and that even more would simply forsake him. And he was right. And through that process, though, Jesus remained faithful and obedient to the call of God. He did not give up the path and the call that he was given by the Father. And he followed faithfully, and his faithfulness and obedience took him to the cross. And as an innocent man, not guilty of any charges, he was crucified with the criminals. He took upon himself our sin and our guilt. And on that cross, our sin was crucified with him and was put to death. And then that's where our story takes place here. So let me read from Matthew 28, verses 1 through 10. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel then said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. 
And then the angel finished by saying, now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. And suddenly Jesus met them, the resurrected Jesus. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. And then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers and sisters to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So I think we want to realize that these women who were making their way to the tomb on this first day of the week after the Sabbath were perhaps the same women who took the dead body of Jesus off the cross and laid it in that tomb several days before. Because that was one of the, the tasks and jobs and callings uh, of the women in that culture. They were to take care of the dead and prepare them for burial. So it's not unlikely that Mary and the other Mary uh, were two of those women who took the body of Jesus down off the cross and laid it in the tomb. But it was too near the Sabbath, so they couldn't continue with their burial preparations, so they left. And then they came back after the Sabbath to anoint his body. And other Gospels say that on the way they were probably having a conversation about how they were going to get into the tomb because the stone was so large, there was no way that they were going to roll it back on their own. And when they had arrived, they realized and they saw that that stone, that big stone had been moved during this earthquake. And upon that stone sat an angel, a messenger of God. I find it kind of humorous, really, that the guards who were assigned to watch the dead body of Jesus that the word of God says that they shook and became like dead men themselves. It's interesting how Jesus' life and resurrection caused them uh, to be so frozen in what they believed or what they thought. But upon arrival, the angel says to the women, do not be afraid. And I want to recall for us today that it was also when the angel visited Mary before the physical birth of Jesus, that he calmed her and said, do not be afraid. So a messenger of God comes before the physical birth of the Savior, and now the same, a messenger of God, an angel, comes before the new birth, the birth of, um, of Christ after death, something new, and says to the women, do not be afraid. I think that matters for us because it's so clear that fear is often a fallback position for us. When we don't know, when we don't understand what's happening, when we can't be in control, when something is beyond us, it is easy to become anxious and to be afraid. So I think the message of God for us today also is the same. Do not be afraid. But the angel gives the reason why we should not be afraid. I know, he says to women, you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. Here's the reason. He's not here. He is risen, just as he said. That's the bedrock of our faith. That's the reason we don't have to be afraid. Because Christ has overcome death. The power of God has defeated the grave. Our dying is not the end. Your loved one's death is not the end. Jesus says so. He is risen. He is not here. Come and see the place where he lay, the angel said. In other words, come see for yourself. Come see for yourself. And they did. And then the women become the first apostles, if you will, because they were sent by the angels. The angel and said, he says, then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen. They had this message of resurrection and hope that the angel had given them and that their eyes had beheld. 
And he says, tell them he's going before them to Galilee and there you will see him. And then the angel says, now I've told you, I've, I've done what I've been sent to do. But the women had that message to carry. And I want to ask you for a moment to consider what those women were thinking about and, and how they approached this. You know, we have 2,000 years of theological reflection. We have the rest of the New Testament to guide us in understanding what the resurrection of Jesus is all about. But these women, on the very first day of resurrection, simply saw that the body of Jesus wasn't there. They had no idea what that meant. They had no developed theology of resurrection. They had no academic understanding of the New Testament. It was just this stark new reality. The only thing they did know, something was different. Something has changed. Death used to be the end. Death was the final word. It was all over but now Jesus is alive, what does that mean? And I want to invite all of us here to realize that like those women, we can go to the tomb or we can live life without many expectations. I mean, they were just expecting to anoint a dead body. That's all. They didn't have anything else but sadness to accompany them. But we can allow grief to determine how we walk through life but the resurrection of Jesus says, hey, don't, don't be surprised when you're surprised that the power of God is at work in your life. Don't just think that it's going to be the same tomorrow as it is today. There's something new happening. God raised Jesus from the grave to show us that there is new life and that there is hope. And then it says the women hurried away and they were afraid. We've talked about that. Yet filled with joy. Filled with joy even in the midst of their fear. And I would like to say that joy and hope sort of go together. They had this expectation and hope. And so they were full of joy and beloved as believers and followers of Christ. That should be something that is characteristic of our lives. To live with joy. Even when times are hard, to know that God is with us and God is greater than our problem or our circumstance. If God can raise Jesus from the grave, then God can do something new in your life where you are. And as they were going to tell the disciples, Jesus shows up for heaven's sakes. What would you make of that if you were those women? You'd be a little bit startled. And he says, greetings. <laughs> Just a common greeting. Some translations say, hail. Uh, the other, uh, I looked up the word, the real Greek meaning says, joy be to you. Joy be yours, Jesus says. May you have joy. And at, in an instant, they fell down, they grasped his feet, and they worshiped. In other words, they fell to their knees in praise. In humility. What a great picture in my mind. They were overwhelmed with the sight of Jesus. They thought he was dead. And here he is alive. Can you believe that? And he says the same thing. And he sends them. And says, go. Tell my brothers to go to Galilee. And I will see them there. And do not be afraid. So on this Easter day, when we proclaim that he is risen, it's just not an empty saying or a liturgical practice or ritual. It has great power and great meaning. It says that God's power is greater than anything else. Because in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul writes to the church and says the greatest thing that we fear, the last enemy to be defeated, is death. And Jesus defeated death. And if he can defeat death and overcome the grave, what is there in your life that he can't conquer? And in him, therefore, we are more than conquerors as well. It's not us. It's not our power who can overcome those obstacles, those trials. It's the power of God in us that allows us to be victors.
So on this Easter Sunday, I say to you, you are part of the victorious clan of the body of Christ. In Christ, you are an overcomer. Do not let the darkness overwhelm you. Allow the light to give you hope. Allow the light to fill us with joy. Because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the gospel message of hope that we have in Christ. Not only is his death on the cross what has taken care of the guilt or shame of our sin, but his resurrection from the grave and that empty tomb gives us hope for a new life, a life where there is no death, for grief or sorrow or tears or suffering or pain. Jesus promises that when he returns, all will be made right. Thank you for that promise and that hope. May it allow us to live each and every day with the joy of Christ. We pray in his name. Amen. Hopefully the ushers and others may have given you um, a little cup with communion in it. There's juice and in the very top there's a wafer. I'm just going to be honest with you, it doesn't taste really good. <laughs> and in order to get it, um, you're going to have to peel off the top layer in just a moment. And it's not the same as peeling off the lid for the juice, so be very, very careful when you do that. So those are the instructions, but let me give you the, the background here. If you remember on the night of his last supper, when this Lord's Supper was instituted, Jesus said to his disciples that he would not eat of the fruit of the vine again until he was in the kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom of God. And so I want to invite us tonight, today, to not only think of that night that Jesus hung on the cross, but also to think ahead in anticipation of what is forward and to come, that the kingdom of God is coming in all of its fullness. And as I said in the prayer, what God promises us in the book of Revelation, when there is a new heaven and a new earth, is that there will be no more death. There will be no more pain. There will be no more suffering. There won't be broken relationships or brokenness of any kind, but the rule and the reign of God will be complete and total, and he will make it all right, and it will be all just, and it will be all good. That's why we say, come quickly, Lord Jesus, come quickly. But in the meantime, friends, that resurrection of Jesus allows us to see glimpses of that kingdom, right? When Jesus healed the paralytic, when he opened the eyes of the blind, when he healed the lame, he was showing a glimpse of that kingdom that was to come in fullness one day. He started it. It's on its way. It's not here yet, but have hope. He's coming back. Let's pray before we have communion. Holy Spirit, take the bread and the cup this day and set them apart for your holy use that they would remind us not only what Jesus has accomplished and that it is finished but what he has pointed toward your kingdom of heaven not only the meal that he shared with his disciples but the banquet feast that we will have with all the saints one day when your kingdom comes in all of its fullness upon his return May this meal nourish us so that we would be a people of hope and a people of joy. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. So it was on the night that he was betrayed that Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he blessed it and he broke it. He said, this is my body. Broken for you. Do this, remembering me take and eat.
And in the same manner after supper, Jesus took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. Whenever you drink this, do it remembering me. For every time you eat the bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord. Hear this. Until he comes again. Take a drink. Let's pray, friends. God, thank you. Thank you for this glorious meal that reminds us of the sacrifice of Jesus and your grace through his atoning death. And thank you that this meal also allows us to anticipate that heavenly banquet feast when we will be with the saints in your kingdom all around that table celebrating with one another your glory. As we walk through this life, help us to see glimpses of your kingdom, to experience the power of resurrection in our own life by being overcomers and victors in Christ. May your spirit give us that peace we know because Jesus is Lord, even over death. We pray in his name, amen. So let's stand together, friends, and sing our final hymn this morning.
the Apostle in the book of Romans says, What is it that will separate us from the love of God? Will famine or nakedness or trouble or sword? He says, No. In all of these things, we are more than overcomers through him who loved us. We are victors in Christ. We have victory in Jesus. And then he goes to say, nothing will separate you from the love of God. Absolutely nothing. And he goes through a list of what we think and what we feel sometimes separates us from the love of God. And on that list, it includes death. It says, no, not even death separates you from the love of God that we know in Jesus Christ. Because Christ has defeated death. He's overcome it. God has raised him, and Jesus is alive. Beloved, just as the angel and Jesus sent the women to tell the disciples the good news that he is risen, so God sends you and me into the world this week to tell the world there is good news. There is hope. Even amidst the brokenness, there is one who has overcome it. Even the grave he's overcome, his name is Jesus. So wherever you're going this week, it's not by accident. But God is sending you there. Because he has something he wants to do in you and through you in that very place. Remember that nothing will separate you from God's and that it is his grace in his son our savior Jesus that obedient life that sacrificial death this glorious resurrection and his promised return he is our hope he is our salvation and may the Holy Spirit so fill you that you would overflow with joy in the days of him and that this uh, afterglow of Easter would not fade too quickly or wear off, but that you would continue to walk in the light today and tomorrow and always. Go in that peace. Amen.